Hi everybody. Hello everybody. Starting, we should start shortly. I'm just waiting for Janath to join us. Thank you for logging in. Hello. Hi, Janath. Hi, how are you, Tanya? I'm good. How are you? All well. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here with us. It's, it's an absolute pleasure to speak to you and get all your insights on how to use, how to design luxury spaces using stone. So yes. Thank you very much. I'm just going to give a quick introduction to you just for the benefit of our audience. And yes. uh, then we'll just uh, start off straight away. Okay, we have a, our format is fairly simple, a few questions, we, and then we'll close with some questions from the audience, if they have any, and uh, that's about it. We'll try and stick to about 30 to 40 minutes. Thank sure. you so much. And uh, so, there, uh, so Janet Parsi Interior Design is an award-winning multidisciplinary boutique practice based out of Mumbai. Uh, founded by interior architect Janet Parsi, the studio's expertise lies in interior space planning, conceptualizing design development and execution. Honing her skills with acclaimed architects and having graduated in interior architecture from Raffles, Singapore and furniture design from Pratt, New York. Uh, with honors, Janath has acquired a significant coterie of clients over the years. Her work has been internationally recognized and featured in multiple global uh, publications including Vogue Living, Architectural Digest, El Decor, Living Etc. UK, Good Homes, amongst others. The studio undertakes luxury residential projects as well as commercial and hospitality projects where Jannat delivers unique aesthetic spaces to our clientele which are functional, well-budgeted and characterized by a strong personality that leaves its mark. Uh, Pasi also believes that design strategy starts with human experience the heart of Janath's designs resonate with her innate style of class with color. Her signature style is a modern aesthetic approach with a balance of bold palette, embossed textures, and unique surface treatments. Thank you, Janath. It's an absolute pleasure to have you with A-Class today. Thank uh, you. My first question to you is based on today's theme, which is design of luxury spaces. And since you have been working in luxury residential projects, what are the latest trends in today's homes? So I feel that, uh, Tanya, when it comes to talking about trends, I feel that a home is a very personal space and it's very important to design in a way that it reflects the client's personality and their taste and it's an embodiment of everything that they love. Uh, having said that, uh, definitely because we are so well-traveled, and we are open and I feel that now the entire global community has become so close and everyone is well informed with what the other one is doing and you know what are the new uh, collections there and everything. So I feel that when it comes to um, getting in a new trend or incorporating a new trend, it would probably be something that the client really loves in terms of if they feel that they currently want to dress a certain way or they're following certain fashion brands or they love a certain kind of culture of a particular city where they travel very often. So I feel that getting that into my space so that it is very taste specific at the end of the day because that's the reason why an interior designer is hired at the end of the day uh, to kind of uh, definitely impart your style and your aesthetic but to do it in a way that when you enter the space it looks like it's your home and it's comforting and you know like I said it's all about human experience. So definitely today if you see the fashion circuit also, which I, you know, follow and I take inspiration from everywhere. It's not only interior design. It may be from 
a museum or it may be like even a street of a city in europe that i really like or like a fashion brand and the kind of stuff they are doing i feel that today design is about minimalism but it's also about injection of like i said bold colors uh, but uh, done in a very mature way i see people doing uh, color but i don't see them using it in the right way i feel that there is a certain mood that every color imparts so if yeah. you do it if you do it in a way which is really thought and you know what kind of vibe you want the space to have then it has a very positive effect so i feel that that's important also uh, experimenting with materials so stone would be one of the most important materials that we experiment with in my studio that i personally really love so definitely that and different textures giving different kind of i think lighting is important so all of that in one space i feel that's uh, that's how we get a trend so a trend is something that would still pass it would come and go but something that is truly what you love when it's your home uh that is something that's you know going to stay because we don't make a house that often like we change clothes you make yeah. your home like i would say it's your dream home so when i have clients to me and you know their luxury homes they have been saving for a certain amount of time and it's very very close to their heart so it's kind of my duty and responsibility to make sure that what we deliver is something that they love yeah that's that's a beautiful thought as well uh so you like you mentioned right now your designs are obviously uh you know there are reflection of your experiences from around the world and fashion and everything else right when you pick up flooring let's say for projects and because you're talking about stone here what are the qualities that you look for you know that would that would resonate uh the client's style personality and sometimes even your own yeah yeah, yeah. no absolutely is very important so i feel that it all starts with uh, the client and their brief but it Uh, boils down to something that i need to love as well there is uh, there are many times when we design a home that you know the client will come with a certain kind of look and it might not be my look because i don't believe in having one particular way of designing there are sites which have done where we use a uh, mock color there are sites where we do only neutrals and we just do a hint or two of statement pieces to kind of create you know that hero element in our design so um, having said that when it comes to flooring and deciding flooring it is the canvas of your entire project according to me because a floor area is something that you see for the first time definitely people experiment a lot with walls and you have wallpapers and veneers and you have the sky is the limit when it comes to that but when you think of a floor and especially when you're talking about luxury projects the first thing that comes to mind is marble and that's where a major chunk of a client's budget also goes of course so it's very important that you decide a marble that kind of suits you it's also the base color to your entire color story and to your entire material material palette and mood board so that's important so i definitely love to pick marbles that are neutral because that's something that allows me to then play with everything else in the space i like to keep the marble common in the entire home so maybe you will not be seeing me use a uh, different marble in every room i like to keep that neutral yeah. and that yeah. same so you know there's some kind of cohesiveness and coordination that is there in the whole space but then if you go to a master bedroom versus a living room versus a dining room or a kids bedroom for example you will see that certain drama happening which which you can tell that this is the room that i've entered uh i yeah so i love white marbles i particularly love a satwario i love the gray versail we're doing our site right now with a beautiful light gray stone we've done uh, golden spider we've done michael and so we've done blue lassa so all these marbles for people who know the technical terms but these are all very neutral marbles they do have certain veins but at the same time it's very important to select the correct lot because a marble is something that you cannot change yeah yeah absolutely. it's not a fabric or a piece of furniture or even a wall paneling or paper something that can be changed but your entire civil which is your marble is something that is here to last so i think it's very important to be careful what you're choosing choose the right quality of stone uh, don't compromise on that and also lay it correctly that's very important can you share some tips on that uh yeah 
no absolutely because you know i have a lot of friends of mine who are not from the industry and uh, they come to me or like you know people who i know and they're like you know look at uh, we've got a stain in the middle of our living room and there is some kind of you know discoloration that's happened and why is this happening and can you tell us what to do so i feel that after a lot of research that i've done uh, with my contractors and with the technical teams we have uh, we have identified that you know the lead that is there in uh, red reti your normal this sand is yeah. uh, something that contains iron and that iron is soaked by a porous marble especially whites because uh, if you're doing a colored marble you might not see it that uh, it's not that visible and it's not that prominent but if you see if you're doing a white marble and all the marbles that i've stated are predominantly light gray or they are white or light gray you'll see that. so it's important to use a white uh, white sand it's important not to use black cement it's important to use white cement also today a lot of the leading contractors are recommending us to not use uh, sand and cement and to use uh, bonding material so you apply bonding material on the back of your uh, marble which anyway has a mesh layer so it becomes very strong and then you apply and then you apply the same uh, you apply the same bonding uh, material the glue onto your surface and stick it so that something after doing ips and pcc which levels the floor so that is something that's much better and your marble is protected right right that's something that's important that's that's very interesting to know and i'm sure that's super useful i mean i even i didn't know about this bonding material thing you know so i mean there is obviously if there's some research that has gone into it i'm glad you've shared it with us yes uh, so there's so brands like yeah. you know people who are watching there are brands like caracol and yeah. bal any other brands that you can use and research on use them instead of like this i would say in terms of cost it's a little more expensive but at the end of the day because you're buying a product which also is of a certain value you're doing justice to maintaining that and, uh, i think that's very important okay so moving on from flooring to detail design right a lot of uh, you in your work one can see a lot of patterns textures even some of the stones that you mentioned they themselves have a lot of texture and you play around with stone you know like like you said so can you can you give us two or three tips on how if one is using a varied range of stones what should one keep in mind to ensure that it's a dynamic play and not something that is completely falls apart so i think it's uh, very simple it's the rule of contrast that you have to follow and that's something that's always worked for me it's a very simple thing it might look like there's a lot of thought gone into it but if you mix something that is very glossy with something that is a matte it tends to look very nice uh, i feel also if you do your heavy textures on the wall probably and then you go for like a plain clean marble flow that's nice so i always like to mix marbles and if not mixing marble with marble i feel mixing a marble with wood that we are currently doing in one of our projects which is turning out to be really nice where we are taking walnuts and we are taking oak and we are putting that in the floor and that's going to be our inlay in the entire marble okay. so something yeah that's very interesting we've also done a lot of uh, metal inlay in our projects earlier so we take a marble that is uh, plain because definitely when you're doing patterns you don't want to put a pattern in a veined marble you want to put a you want to put a pattern in one of your clean plain looking marbles so then you, you know your design stands out so we've done uh, brass inlays we've done copper inlays we've done german silver inlays so that is something that you definitely can look at doing so you have metal inlays you have wood inlays also what we're doing in one project right now is we've got the entire home in micro concrete in a gray seamless micro concrete and we've got a large marble rug in the center of the living room so the entire piece is going to be in the center of your living room it's a very nice framed marble and it's in a leather finish and we have these rough edges on all the sides so it has a very raw look to it so these are different things that we experiment with we do skirtings in different marble whereas your floor is in a different marble we give borders to our marble so sky is the limit okay uh when it comes to 
horizontal versus vertical surfaces right flooring versus facade or even even elements of design right uh, stone is a very versatile material i mean you can use it for floor ceiling facade whatever you name it uh what how does one what are the things to keep in mind or how does one play around with different surfaces so uh, marble on the floor uh, one thing uh, to take care of is like i said earlier the laying process is very important also make sure that you take a marble that's of at least 20 mm thickness that's what i follow a uniform 20 mm thickness also it should be coated on all both the sides that's important it needs to have a mesh also there's a process called vacuuming which means that the uh, because the marble is a natural material and yeah. what i say is that marble is literally like art it's natural art it's god's creation so definitely it is going to have the imperfections which are a part of that but if you uh, a lot of companies the leading companies like a class and so many other companies they're doing these resin bonding so when you do that the marble becomes really uh, you know resistant and it becomes very tough and the flexural strength increases so that is something that you need to take care of when you're doing flooring and polishing or when it comes to walls uh, there is a lot that you can do you can play with different surfaces you can also so if you i feel there are two things one is if you're doing a veined marble or you're doing a colored marble you're doing a exotic stone then it needs to demand that attention so i would suggest to leave it just the way it is either do gloss if you like or if you want to do matte then do a lovely leather finish that also can be done when it comes the planes what you can do is you can play with cnc routing there and you can do these lovely fluting which we're doing in a lot of our projects and i see that when that is done it adds a completely different three dimension to the whole marble so that is something that you can do when it comes to furniture because we do a lot of furniture in marble i would like to tell people that don't uh, shy away from using stone in your furniture especially your built in furniture because definitely because of the weight you want to do you don't want to do stand alone furniture you want to do more built in furniture you can do coffee tables because we've done that before we have these huge heavy 100 kilo coffee tables but we put a rug beneath so it becomes easy to move it you know as compared so we've done stuff like that but definitely your consoles and a lot of different uh, cabinets shutters we've done marble shutters we've done vanities in marble so that is something that you can do uh, you can get the same uh, you can get the same tone in your entire room so just as you paint the surface the same color and then do the cabinets in the same color you can also look at doing that entire concept in a stone that looks very nice also another thing tanya when it comes to ceilings uh, people are a little wary of using marble because of the heavy weight so there is a technology where there is a technology where you can shave the entire marble into a much thinner piece into half its thickness put a honeycomb back and then stick it on your ceiling so it becomes very lightweight and also it becomes very very uh, durable easy to maintain and at the same time you're not worried about it falling because the yeah. detail is done so beautifully yeah. so you can basically use marble anywhere it's not a material only for floor like people think i feel that a uh, beauty and something that's very striking is uh, when something is very different when you see newness in a material that you very used to seeing and you're uh, familiar with that is something that good design is to me okay that sounds really really interesting actually i mean you've shared so many ideas you know i think we can go back and watch this video again uh so another thing you do you use stone in a lot of sort of interior and i mean interior spaces of course but also a lot of exterior spaces right in in landscape and balconies decks gardens terraces uh what are the things that one should keep in mind when you're using stone outside so when you're using stone outside i've seen a lot of clients are uh, not very comfortable with using uh, stone in exteriors i've had this experience before when i've suggested certain stones they've been uh, a little wary there are a couple of reasons because of that and there are products that you can use so that you don't face these issues 
so one would be uh, the uv rays so the moment you think of going out in the open you're thinking of uv rays you're thinking of discoloration of marble you're thinking of the effect of heat you're thinking of the effect of rainfall and water so you're thinking of porosity so all these things have to be taken into consideration you're also thinking of bacteria because yeah. marble is stone so uh, to take care of that there are coatings available in the market and there are again like i said the leading companies do offer to architects like us they offer very lovely uh, coatings that are done on the marble so that they become ready and uh, recommended for outdoor use so you must also look at the value add that you can do into a marble you can also play with so i mean when it comes to outdoor you can do planters in marble you can do your coffee table in marble you could do your dining table in marble there's a lot that you can do uh, according to me also it's important not to just select any marble because uh, with my supplier and with y'all again it's uh, important for you to recommend the right marbles to us because you all are technically more equipped as compared to us with every marble the porosity of the marble the strength of the marble so i feel that the same thing that applies to uh, the outdoor also applies to probably a kitchen where you're worried about staining and all of that so so it's important what kind of marble you use i would recommend you to use a very um, dense quartz or the granite so these are materials that you can use without having to worry about the porosity even when it comes to marbles you can go for the marble with coating okay uh thank you uh what about uh you know we were talking about using marble for furniture and other design elements right like yeah. vanity and so on and so forth what are the ways in which you have sort of explored marble beyond the traditional ways in which it gets used Did so like have some ideas yeah 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 so absolutely so we have done vanities in marble because i like to get the entire i like the concept of a chunk of stone because there's right. something with gold and you know uh, pure about that idea according to me definitely yeah. and just put a chunk without adding value to it because at the end of the day however luxurious the project may be it's very important to add some kind of functionality and practicality into that so we have done vanities where we where i really love to do spaces and furniture pieces and products which are seamless so we do marble we clad the entire every side and every finish uh, would be in marble but at the same time it's very important to use good hardware that takes the strength of the marble so that is something that uh, everyone who wants to do that please feel free to do it only just make sure that your hardware is good quality and can take the load and then you won't have any other problem so vanities would be one thing consoles would be another thing where you can use marble you can also use marble in art piece so there are these beautiful exotic marbles available today and i would recommend not using too much of that marble if your space is small but if your uh, space is small and you want to use just a little bit of that you can create a art piece and you can actually frame that marble beautifully yeah. so that you can you can also play with opaque marbles and translucent marbles like a crystal or a onyx together uh, there's a marble called patagonia which gives you that kind of effect naturally so if you want to create that effect that can be done there is a marble blue lemurian so we've done uh, it actually doing this uh, blue marble which has like these mother of pearl tints into that so i feel that play of different marbles together looks very nice we've done coffee table marble we've done a bookcase in marble apart from a lot of bathroom we've done bathroom frames bathroom mirror we've done uh, cnc routing and we've done uh, 3d uh, 3d cutouts into marble so the entire thing looks like a jali the entire yeah. surface looks like a jali but it's all in stone so it becomes very easy to maintain also so yeah. and it's very unique for the client so mm-hmm. i feel and also demands a lot of attention and a lot of value so that is something that i like to do so just think of marble being a material which you can play with have fun with and make sure that you do it correctly take the guidance of your suppliers and i think you should be okay thank you 
uh, that was super useful janat i think you've shared so many ideas as well uh, but we obviously have limited time today so i'm just going to quickly uh, i mean a lot of people have said hi hellos and you know we have a lot of followers here but i'm going to pick out maybe just two questions and i'll ask you those from the audience so one is how do you protect uh, wood inlays on flooring so basically wood inlays have to be coated again so like how you polish your how you polish your marble and you do mirror polishing or any polishing that you may prefer for wood inlays you need to coat the marble so that coating is very important you can get a matte pu coating you get poly coat coating so when it comes to that i think a company called ica by pidlite is very good there's a company called color coats which is very good so these companies can give you solutions to get your wood coated so that is something that is uh, needs to be taken care of before inlaying it also the same thing would go for your metal inlays it has to be coated before you put it so it doesn't tarnish or like you know change color and wear over time mm-hmm. if you want to retain the beauty and the glossiness of it okay and another question is uh, what kind of quartz stone do you recommend uh, in kitchens to avoid staining so there are many natural quartz stones available in different colors they go by different names so every company has a different name for it uh there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of companies who are actually not a lot but there are a few companies who i would recommend who do artificial quartz uh, which are uh, so kalinga stone would be one uh, your caesar stone would be one there's dectin there's laminam there are all these different products that are uh, not natural but they are man made but they are very dense and they also are stain proof i've done the testing myself so that is something i can recommend and when it comes to naturals there's an entire variety of quartz if you're looking for color so it's just about what you can explore and find but there is a lot out there fabulous uh and thank you for you know sharing all your ideas it looks like there's a lot more that we can even talk about stone with you uh yes. but i'm going to keep it short and sweet uh i'm really glad that you shared all your sort of you know insights as well as tips with brands also mentioned so that's super yeah. useful for our audience uh one uh, last thing that we do is uh, we follow the hashtag let's talk design so if there was one thing that you had to say about stone with let's talk design what would that be oh uh, i mean there's a lot that i can say about stone i can just keep going on and on but <laughs> say that uh, stone is a natural uh, natural piece of art that you can buy you can frame it you can really add value to your space by using the correct marble you can do it in any way that you like so experiment be creative and be original get some uniqueness into your space thank you so much jannat uh, a class celebrates 50 years this year being in the industry so i would gesture uh, we're going to plant a tree on your behalf and you'll get a certificate from us thank, thank you so for much being part of the a class journey and yes. it was an absolute pleasure to have this conversation with you likewise thank you so much thank you for everyone who's here lots of luck to everyone yes thank you you have a lot of friends and family and followers here who said hi and you may want to go through the messages later okay so i would get a little distracted but i'm going to see it now Yeah okay thank you so much thanks a lot bye thank you bye bye